is it not here and nowhere else that the construction of the building of an incredible height stretching from the earth to the heavens took place. I'm Jay McCain, and this is Bad Books by Worse People. I'm joined, of course, with my good friend. This is Levi, famed non-historian, lover of better books than what we're almost <laughs> certainly lining ourselves up for here. That's, yeah, okay, so I, I do have some uh, something of a background in history, nothing like extensive or anything. But the reason that I, I reached out to you to do this is because you actually read. I know you're you're someone who enjoys good books. I try, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Until I, I get invited into scenarios like this. Mm-hmm. And I love bad people. <laughs> not, yeah. not, not that I love them, I'm just fascinated by bad people. It's a study, it's a hobby. So... I asked you to uh, do a book club podcast with me where we would discuss Zabiba and the Key, a romance novel by Saddam Hussein, the Butcher of Baghdad. (laughs) You you know, when you lead with that, when you told me that Saddam Hussein had written a romance novel, I I was kind of thinking that this was going to get horny. I was curious to see what, like, a horny podcast would be. I was expecting Iraqi Fabio on the cover, (laughs) heaving bosoms. Uh Uh-huh. I wanted wanted to hear Saddam Hussein basically say, I'm good, I'm real good at sex in this (laughs) allegory. Uh, you're, you're... And we haven't gotten there yet. You're getting, you're getting ahead of, (laughs) ahead of my notes a little bit, because... I, w- I was flabbergasted by the end of today's reading. Absolutely flabbergasted. I'm curious to see where we came <laughs> down at the end of the thing, because for the listeners at home, we are testing this out by using Google Books Preview. Right. I'm not convinced we both read to the same point, <laughs> because the algorithm appears to have changed which pages it has given us access to. Yeah. Google has determined... How many pages each of us individually are allowed to have of this book? Yeah. <laughs> Which is absolutely bananagrams. <laughs> it really... Thank you for inviting me on this journey. So, my sort of... I want to jump into the book uh, in a minute here, but my fascination of Saddam Hussein uh, sort of began... I mean, you and I both were in high school during the beginning of the Iraq war. I remember as a child watching uh, Desert Storm on TV in night vision and stuff. But Mm -hmm. recently I I dove into a Wikipedia article about the Iran-Iraq war of 80 to 88. And I really discovered just what a bastard Saddam was. You know, (laughs) I did, I didn't get it, you know, when I was in high school. I knew he was a like a despot and stuff, but just what a bad guy he was. Uh, and then I found out that he wrote a lot of books, including what's supposed to be a, a romance novel. And I had to take a look at it, and so I googled it, and Google allowed me to read 39 pages of the book. And just the fact that it had a big old picture of Saddam Hussein's face right there front and center uh like i i had to check it out and i could not put it down and i read about like 10 pages i was like i need someone to talk to about this so i'm I'm very excited for this journey um and i think i'm gonna have to buy the book off the internet which is going to throw off my amazon analytics significantly i think but maybe for the best yeah we're we're our, we're on a list. Oh, I, as soon yeah. as I hit order today, I just I can feel the bits and bytes mm-hmm. going to an NSA server, and and we're being tracked now um, for being weird enough to purchase a book with Saddam Hussein's face on the front. Now, this is edited by Robert Lawrence. We are not reading it in its original language, which <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid is probably we're probably missing some things. <laughs> I think so. I think there's a lot of translation issues. 
<laughs> now, whether Robert Lawrence is intentionally making Saddam Hussein sound like an idiot <laughs> I, or not. We'll, we'll get to that. Know. I think in some <laughs> ways he is. And also it should be noted that all the profits uh, go to that editor. I mean, oh, I, yeah? obviously Saddam Hussein's not getting any of this money. But... <laughs> it's not going to... I don't know. Is, does he have next of kin that is still alive? I don't think so. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm not on... <laughs> Well, judging now, by the behavior of the titular king, perhaps he does. <laughs> yeah, although his family in the book is not a fan of him, and I do wonder <laughs> if that, if some of that is, uh, you know, ripped from real life. <laughs> you did mention the cover. I recommend on Wikipedia, Zabiba and the King. That article does show the original yeah, cover, I which did see is. That. Cl- is closer to what I was expecting yeah. in terms of cover art for a romance novel. Absolutely. The bosoms aren't heaving quite as much as I'd expect, but there's a little bit of shoulder flesh. It also, uh, it doesn't have Saddam Hussein's name on it. He published this under a pseudonym or anonymously. Yeah, which was, the pseudonym was, isn't it the like, the guy who wrote the book or something? Right, yeah. It's something weird. <laughs> but we should jump in. So the first the first two pages of this book are almost entirely in the form of rhetorical questions. Mm-hmm. A very... Apparently Saddam's a big fan of the rhetorical question. Yeah, and that's another thing where I'm like, is this just a cultural thing? Like, is this lost in translation? I don't know. I, it's, it feels a little bit like kind of the classic tales you hear of like, a, I'm trying to remember how a thousand and one nights goes where there's like a narrator who's asking you philosophical questions as sort of a opening. Well, that makes um, a lot of sense because <laughs> there's a lot of that going on here. Yeah. It's not a, a trope that's super out of there. It does, it does start to get a little bit like Conan the Barbarian, the you know like between the time when oceans drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of, and then he gets kind of super anti-Semitic <laughs> <laughs> with the raging Zionism bursts forth and formed a grotesque alliance with America. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, he goes on to talk about all the great things that have happened in Iraq, referencing Babylon a lot. Um, the Wikipedia article for Babylon, because I, I did look it up, it features a picture of Babylonian ruins from Saddam's summer home. So obviously he was he, he was pretty in touch with the historical roots of the Iraqi people. Which is cool. Uh, what's not so, cool is he goes on then to exert that half the wonders of the ancient world were in Iraq. Yep, that's is, a bold statement. Yeah, which is where we get our first editor's note, where the editor says um, <laughs> I, <laughs> that he's including the Great Pyramid of Giza and the Library of Alexandria, which are in Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the editor is saying, like, oh, it's Seems to appear that our author is implying that Egypt should be part of Iraq. With an exclamation point. I like that the yeah. editor puts some emotion into his own. Yeah, yeah. This is your editor speaking. <laughs> um, he's full of shit, just so you know. Read on, yeah. dear, dear yeah. readers. Just in case he didn't know, dear reader, Egypt is not part of Iraq. In fact, it's off by quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he goes on to say that Iraq is uh, the home of Adam and Eve and Abraham and Muhammad and Noah. And I'm no biblical scholar, so I can't tell you what's what. But I mean, when he's talking about, he talks about uh, Iraq being the first land where uh, I think it's something about wheat being harvest, uh, harvested and uh, the first land where milk sprung from the udder. So, you know, it is a cradle of civilization, right? So that makes sense. 
I, I, I have no qualms with that. On the Tigris and Euphrates right there. Fine. <laughs> after that, uh, after that, he goes on to talk about uh, raging Zionism bursting forth and forming a grotesque alliance with America, which... All right. America was a long way off at this point. As was Zionism, but... Um, <laughs> He, he just had to get that in there right there. I, I guess that's what a, a great author might call foreshadowing. So, a great author likes it up. Yeah, you know, we're going to bag on him a lot for being a bad... Or, for not being the strongest writer, I'll say. But, he did put pen to paper. He broke out his... Uh, I, he, I assume he couldn't use a computer because the CIA would have been all over this book way before it was ready to publish. Um... But you know what? He wrote something. He put it out there in the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that entitles him to pad Iraq's resume <laughs> in a tasteful way. That's true. If I was writing a, a history of Washington State, I might, ah, you know, Ben Franklin was from here. Uh, you know, the, George uh, Washington definitely made a visit and said, this land is dope. Uh-huh. The uh, home to the Golden Gate Bridge. Seahawks, the two time <laughs> Super Bowl championships. Super Bowl <laughs> 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 you know, right. just things how they should have how they should have gone. <laughs> you know. And we've been fighting the Zions and the grotesque American <laughs> infidels <laughs> since the dawn of time, apparently. Yeah. Just gotta always slide that in there. Uh yeah. Those damn Luxembourgians always had a yeah had a beef you know, with us. There is a line in there where, uh, you know, we get the grandmother telling the the story. This is a story being told, um, and he does lead with whether true or not. Mm-hmm. Once upon a time mm-hmm. is how the old woman from the village where my family would start her story. So you know, she's kind of prefacing that. You know, this is not entirely true. It's it's how they start Star Wars in a land far, far away a long time ago. <laughs> Those first two like, pages should have been in this crawling Star Wars <laughs> plot. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my God. It would have been like if Yoda had written the, the intro crawl to Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, and maybe that's where he got this from. A <laughs> long time too. ago. Far, far away, was it not? Um, exactly. Yeah, so we are introduced to our... I, and this is where I start to have a hard time telling who's telling this story. Because we just had two pages of kind of a narrator. And now we're introduced to an old woman. Um, an old woman, a healer, beloved by her clan. Who says, uh, whether true or not, once upon a time. Dot, dot, dot. And so she's telling the story, but there's also a meta narrator talking about her because this old woman is a character and we see her do things later in this, in the story. Yeah. I, it's someone telling a story about someone telling a story. Well, the narrator is like listening to this person telling it's very princess bride. Oh God! I, you're yeah, right. It's it's the grandfather telling the son the story, and so there's two people debating the the story <laughs> as the story also unfolds. I think Saddam might have been a little, ins- maybe too inspired, a little plagiaristic uh-huh. with that particular mechanism. He's already stolen from Star Wars, and he's stealing from the Princess Bride too. You know, you steal from one source, it's plagiarism. You steal from a bunch, it's inspiration. You're right. Okay, so uh, our narrator starts telling the story to a young boy. Oh, God, I don't, I don't even know who this young boy is supposed to be. The narrator? Later? The king? I don't I... think the king. <laughs> I think he's of the common folk. Anyway, so we meet our king. Uh, and so... He's described as living before people followed Allah's law. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next couple of pages will determine that was a lie. But anyway. 
It's- yeah, that's true. They do bring up. I, you know what? Wasn't paying close enough attention. Yeah, it's that would like, confuse the hell out of me. Uh, it says he was the king of the four corners of the earth, but goes on. He wanted people who live far to bow their heads. He wanted kings far away to submit to him. So he ruled the four corners of the earth, but he also wanted to rule more of the earth. So maybe there's, maybe it's like an octagon. And he rolled was... four of the corners. <laughs> Maybe it's like a Dungeons and Dragons, like a planar system. <laughs> like he really, you know, he's got the mat- the material plane under control, but you want to get into that plane of fire, yeah, plane of water. A true make king, those heads bow. A true yeah. king rules the elemental plane of earth. <laughs> that's, exactly. That's, yeah. the, that's the marking of a true ruler. Yeah. The. What really threw me off was I knew, and if the readers haven't picked up on it yet, this is story is an allegory for um, Zabiba is, did you say Kuwait when we were originally discussing the book? Yeah, I think she's supposed to be the people, and we haven't met Zabiba yet, but uh, she's supposed to represent the people of Iraq. Okay. So there's her... I thought the king was supposed to be the U.S., so I was... I think the king is supposed to be a Gary Stu stand-in for Saddam Hussein, and then Zabiba's husband, who we haven't met yet, is And that's what threw me off. Because the king, I was like, the king sounds cool! Like, you know, he's beloved by his people, he rules the world. (laughs) Uh, And I kept waiting for him to have this sort of forceful relationship with Zabiba. And And so this whole portion I'm reading going, yeah, we're pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) The U.S. has got it. (laughs) No, the the king is definitely the ultimate uh, Gary Stu. But uh, before we can learn more about the king or Zabiba, we have to stop and uh, wait for the old lady to do chores. And this yeah. is when we find out that she's from a town called Sab. And then uh, she goes on and tells a little bit more of the story. Um, so our king, we're introduced to him going on a horse ride. Uh, he leaves For his, a half hour. Uh, yeah, he goes for if, a long horse ride. He leaves his If ma- we measure the time the way oh, yeah. we do it in our days. Right, yeah. I liked that little... Real... A lot of asides at the start of this book. They kind of fade out as we go on. I, yeah. I don't know if like the opening was kind of like some last minute edits on Saddam's part that you know the editor didn't get a hold of. I appreciated him stopping to let us know that in the past they measured time differently. That that was an important detail to one Mister Saddam Hussein, the butcher of Baghdad. <laughs> it's a half hour. Now, yeah, he does, goes on a half hour ride, and uh, he leaves his magnificent palace for this horse ride, and then he uh, he finds a slightly smaller palace, and uh, he he's not familiar with this palace. It uh, arouses his uh, curiosity, and um, there's a little hut outside. Um, at this point, the old lady stops again. And she goes on about on kind of like a Bernie Sanders esque tirade about wealth redistribution. Yep, which is really weird. To just I don't know, like coming when these, from Saddam. Yeah, it, from a <laughs> tyrannical despot to stop his narrative to talk about how uh, poor people should get more money because the rich people have all the money and the poor people live in poverty. It's just I. I mean, I guess it could be... I'm taking him too literally, and this is probably just pandering, you know? Yeah. Uh, it It is strange that he take, he has these asides, and I'm what I'm trying to determine, and I hope by the time we get to the end of this thing, we can kind of understand, like, if this is, like, a tale of warning about what happens with this kind of, like, if it reaches that point where they have, like, ah, the king starts doing these things, and then he gets his butt overthrown and assassinated, just like, I think, which is how Saddam Hussein kind of came to power. <laughs> um, I, I am curious if this is him, at the end of his life, like, rewriting 
rewriting history a little bit in his own mind. Oh yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's absolutely. He's saying like, I really meant well. Yeah. I'm sorry. It didn't yes. work out. Yeah. I had a lot of bad people around me. Yes. Yes. Oh, that definitely comes up. <laughs> yeah. For real. This is very much a, uh, retelling of history in more than one way, literal history and metaphorical history. And uh, so <laughs> our, our old lady, uh, stops and has a hearty laugh and all the children take time to, um, comment on how nasty her teeth are yeah which is listen you kids don't have tv grandma's trying to entertain you and you're all being a bunch of assholes lay off grandma's teeth yeah i agree you little you little butts um i doubt they have teeth like (laughs) you don't either what's the what's the diet you think of these children it cannot be good it cannot be calcium rich yeah well the first milk sprung from an udder in iraq so (laughs) yeah and then we took it and left (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't about realism it was about that (laughs) iraqi milk (laughs) oh yeah and our old lady remembers uh she reflects on a time when she was engaged to her cousin uh, and she re- uh, received a dowry of less than a dozen sheep. And then her dad took them all, and uh, she couldn't buy a dress for her wedding. Uh, so it's real sad, and you're, you're sympathetic for this old lady who has no teeth as taking care of these crappy kids. Yeah, and the last line is, even though it had happened almost 40 years ago. Again, lay off grandma. <laughs> like, I had, yeah, 40 <laughs> years ago, but yeah, let it, let her it go. life has been shit since she's allowed to carry a little bit of a grudge about it leave the past in the past you old hag <laughs> pass the milk you <laughs> We're don't naughty need children it. <laughs> yeah so, so the king and this is yeah i think the last time we hear from grandma <laughs> i think so she just disappears like a force ghost uh the king races his horse to a small hut and sees this is when we meet zabiba a young woman quote, in the bloom of her years, and I have written here, yuck. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't need any flower metaphors for women. Like, the whole, that whole, ugh, it just grosses me out. Like, blossoming in the bloom of her years. Ugh, ugh. I mean, that suggests, like, 13, right? In the oh, medieval oh, context fuck. of the term. Levi, I haven't even thought about this. I'm sorry. I, didn't but... even, I, I was picturing her as like 25 this whole time. No, you haven't read enough oh, Game of Thrones. Oh. I, I think George R. R. Martin and Saddam oh. went to the same writer's workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, I don't know if Saddam managed to finish all of his Fuck. books before he died. But oh, him the, and George oh. R do have that in common. <laughs> the ticking of time against You just the ruined earth. this book for me. This was it. This is what killed it. The gassing of the Kurds is one thing, but like... Oh my god, that's, that's even more disgusting. <laughs> okay, let's move forward. I can't think about yep. that. Uh, the king is impressed... Uh, with the cleanliness of uh, Zabiba's hut, and I have just written down right now that this is where he starts feeling sorry for himself. Because, oh my <laughs> god. This hut is so clean, my palace sucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, wow, what a simple life. It's all organized. Man, my palace is so pepper. And he really <laughs> he really feels bad about the life that he has to leave. Um, you know, he killed somebody when he got back to the palace that night i do wonder if saddam there's a couple points in this book where i wonder if his staff around him is like who must have read this (laughs) thinking what's going on in saddam's head and the cleaning staff must have read this and been like oh shit yeah oh oh no he doesn't like the palace we gotta start guys 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 get the mop get the mop we're going out right now because He's clearly feeling the need for some cleanliness and harmony. Yeah. Yeah, for real. I mean, I would be. I would feel that way if I read this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry. I've got a couple points marked here in my notes where it's like, (laughs) this person probably took pause when they read it. Uh, The king stops to 
make a note about how he's not interrupting her when she speaks and how mm-hmm. that's <laughs> and how proud of himself he is for that. Real gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Hey lady. Listen, I I could have been up interrupting you sentences ago, alright? I'm the but king around here. He's just so clean. Uh, it should be noted, we don't know. When we say the king, we don't have a name for this guy. It's Saddam, but... <laughs> <laughs> he just... He actually... He could show that much restraint. <laughs> <laughs> he re- this guy really is the ultimate Gary Stu. Just absolute <laughs> self-insert. Um, so after this, some time passes, and the king starts visiting her frequently. And it says in the book, she visits him frequently, too. Quote, and because of something that we shall hear later, it happens that the king fell in love with Zabiba. And that's just good storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> Having a line in there about how, we'll tell you later, but they fell in love. Yeah, the foreshadow. I, um, <laughs> but past now shadow, you... <laughs> too. Just regular <laughs> shadow. You did skip over the point where, just so we're clear, the king did not ask about her husband oh, and yeah. did not feel jealous of him oh, because the God. husband had a legal right to her. Uh, so, you know, brush your hands off. We're <laughs> he didn't ask about her husband, so everything's totally cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, she has a husband. Now this whole, ugh, Levi, I, why did you do that to me? Mm-hmm. Oh, why did you do that to me? I didn't even think. I was like, she's already married. She's probably like, ugh, Levi. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, they got married at 12 back then, turns yeah. out. <laughs> so this is, she's like a year in. Yeah. Um, so then I have, I have here a uh, big oof time because the mm-hmm. king is not jealous of Zabiba's husband. But he nope. is jealous of her mouth. And he goes on for a long time about mouth stuff. And a really long time. <laughs> so I I read this before I started writing my notes. And uh-huh. I was like, this is the moment where I was like, I have to do a podcast on this. <laughs> because Saddam Hussein is talking about this woman's mouth for paragraph and paragraph and paragraph. And describing how jealous he is of the morsels of food and water that go past her lips. And that that's the only thing he's jealous of. And upon my reread, when I was taking my notes, I literally was like, I can't, I can't read this. I, I'm skipping it. <laughs> it's too gross. He talks about her mouth forever. He, no, he's, you know what? Quentin Tarantino's got a thing <laughs> for feet. George R. R. Martin's got a thing for feet. Food, like every great writer has that weakness, and Saddam's is the mouth. Oh God! <laughs> Do not men kiss the lips of oh. a woman more than any of her other beauties? <laughs> Saddam, but you're asking questions. That's how you I don't kiss. Think, that's just how I you kiss. Think, <laughs> yeah, because that's I, how you hit. You kiss people's mouth more than anything else, because that's how you kiss. You know, Ugh. but in today's society, I don't might not be true for everybody. I think Dom's a little old fashioned. Here. <sighs> and I don't want to kink shame you if you have a thing for mouse. That's fine. But you also, <laughs> I'm presuming, dear listener, who has a thing for mouse. I'm also assuming that you didn't become a brutal dictator, kill hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and then also pen a self-insert romance novel about mouse. Oh, <laughs> it's. It's adding insult to injury. I think you make a really good point about (laughs) this whole section. Like, if Saddam has brutally oppressed your uh, your culture, Uh and then you read this and you see what's going through his mind, yeah, yeah, not not cool. I want to read a passage about the hatred of my people and why. So then I think, ah, it's always on his mind. But I read this and go, oh, no, I'm a side thought. Uh Saddam is taking a break from jerking it to (laughs) mouths to come over here and wipe my people off the face of the planet. Uh This is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you break up with someone and you want to know why and you just get no good answers. 
Yeah, it's a, every yeah, answer ethnic is cleansing just is an exactly in- like that, Jay. What a profound <laughs> statement. <It's> just, <laughs> you know what? Inside of each of us is a bad romance novel Ugh. and a despot. Trust me. And you know which one wins? The one you feed. <laughs> <laughs> but do you not feed the despot through the mouth? Oh, we brought it back around. Okay. Yeah, I think we've, we've spent enough time on mouths. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one thing I do like about this book. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, so the king invites Zabiba over, and he gives his guards a uh, specific instruction uh, when she walks through the double doors that they must open them simultaneously at the same speed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, it looks stupid if one door is going faster than the other. Get it together. <laughs> open them at the same speed. It looks awesome. This is all about presentation, man. Yeah, for real. All about presentation when your girl comes to your crib. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. She doesn't bring her you, husband. You make your bed. You open the mm-hmm. doors at the same time. <laughs> yep. You hide the queen somewhere. Or yeah, or do and you. your concubines and uh. everybody else. The guards. This this section that we're just stepping into is almost Shakespearean. Oh yeah. Like the comedy of so? errors that follows of the like the guards seeing Zabiba, not being sure it's Zabiba, and then yeah. she entertains them, and they all laugh, and... Yeah. Oh my goodness, there's just... Between that silliness and the rhetorical questions, it oh, feels like yeah. Shakespeare in the park. Alright, let's 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 try and walk through this, because mm-hmm. that's, yes. that's where we're at. Uh, this is where we learn what the meaning of Zabiba is. Her name. It means mm-hmm. uh, a raisin. Just one. One raisin, Zabiba. Did you look up what it what a bunch of raisins is called? I don't know. Zabibas? I don't either. I'm really <laughs> curious if, if it's just Yeah, is it adding an S? It must be a whole different word. They make such a big deal out of I'm sure, yeah. So it's a big deal. Um I thought I had oh yeah, yeah. Um we find out later so this is where she comes and meets the guards, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the guards are speaking in rhetorical questions. I have here a quote. A man's soul ca- cannot exist in a way that he will demand of it. That is, without hope that it will reach beyond the limits of the possible. So one of the uh, guards is making a joke about, like, <laughs> they're, they're, like, going over the, the, the guest list. And they see Zabiba. And one of the ghosts is like, <laughs> I could go for a raisin right about now. And then, like, the chief guard goes in and basically says that quote about saying, like, hey, don't ask for things that you can't have. It's just a little way to be like, stay in your place, palace guards. Yeah. You don't need to wish for things that belong to the king. So Saddam reinforcing his tyranny. <laughs> yeah. And then- I've got my eye on you guards. This is one of those sections where I'm saying, like, people around Saddam are looking over their shoulder <laughs> right. reading this. Like, oh, shit. Because one of the guards says, but aren't we glad that we serve in the King's Guard and can stuff our bellies mm-hmm. with what is given to us while others are dying of hunger mm-hmm. and get sick because of the lack of nourishment? Mm-hmm. Awkward side eye looking uh-huh. and go back to eyes ahead yeah. i wouldn't want to be the fattest guard in saddam's palace <laughs> at that moment <laughs> but then also they're talking about like the commoners dying of malnourishment outside so like good governance king oh great and wise <laughs> <Yeah>. king <laughs> which is yeah, like who where rules the four corners yeah saddam wants <laughs> right but he can't keep the commoners outside of his own palace gates fed where Saddam wants it both ways, where, like, the people outside are, like, starving and so malnourished and impoverished and stuff, but also he's a great and powerful ruler who can do no wrong, and all the ladies love him, blah, blah, blah. But this is when Zabiba shows up. Oh, yeah, oh, and yeah. so the guards go on and on talking in rhetorical questions. We're back in rhetorical questions for quite a while. And then Zabiba really shows up. really has a go-to. <laughs> and she says the origin of her name, saying that her mother when she was pregnant, uh, was hungry for raisins. And uh, they couldn't get any raisins because those belonged to the to the kings. 
and she said, uh, I would I would settle for just one raisin, and she didn't get any, but she named her daughter a raisin when she was born. Which, okay, that's some storytelling. It's that's... a cool origin story. That would make for a good D&D character name. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but then, of course, we turn it around because the usual place for raisins is raisins is in the storehouses of the rich uh-huh. and the merchants on the tables of kings and important courtiers but when i have the, an opportunity i will make sure that even you can taste raisins and even nuts who knows yeah this is abiba speaking i don't know what she's saying i don't know what she's talking about we've gone from metaphor to what i think is literal yeah but still sounds like a sexual metaphor. Uh-huh. These nuts. You can all taste some raisins and some nuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he writes, who knows? Who knows? What is, what is that statement? <laughs> uh, cotton candy. Uh, I don't know. Oysters. He's on such a roll with these rhetorical questions uh-huh. to say, who knows is such a weird open-ended statement i got a quote a book reviewer that i saw who wrote about this book uh who said saddam hussein has gone from torturing people to torturing analogies (laughs) 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 that's brutal yeah (laughs) that's is that i we should say this as a segment for episode two but and on but we should there's got to be just nothing but cold takedowns on yeah. like goodreads and amazons i read some amazon reviews today that were pretty good yeah oh i didn't even think about yeah. that as a resource <laughs> yeah that's good uh, <laughs> the common tuned. man takes down Saddam mm-hmm. Hussein on right. the internet we call it gallows humor. Uh, hey, <laughs> yeah, so Biba goes on a long rant about the inequality of resources being unjust, but follows it up with an analogy about marathon ru- runners starting at the same place but finishing differently, which is yeah. And- one of these cold, cold takes that Zabiba has throughout this book where she basically reinforces the rule of the key. <laughs> yeah, because not everybody is... Um... I'm looking for the quote now. It's you know not everybody is a has the same qualities. Yeah, it's a so like a, does that like does not the fact that we achieve different results in that marathon independently of our wishes and intentions explain the differences in the resources we possess? Mm. <laughs> does it not? Given a little, getting a little debate going <laughs> with nobody. Do <Dude>, fucking <laughs> put that on r slash unpopular opinions. <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> and your screen name is Sabiba, and <laughs> that could be a good segment too. Unpopular opinions or Sabiba rant. <laughs> yes, uh. <laughs> she does get. She has the same kind of Bernie bro moments that um, <laughs> the King does off and on, which I find interesting. But Although it, they always start as like a Bernie bro thing, but then get warped into a the aristocracy is rightful in its place because of egalitarianism, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Otherwise it wouldn't work. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Equality of outcome is a farce. I'm (laughs) Zabiba. Yes. I'm doing an Alex Jones voice right now. (laughs) I, it's funny because the fact that Zabiba and the King are written so similarly is, humorous in the idea that Saddam Hussein is madly in love with himself. Yes! Um, it's also, yeah, it's also right. a trait that somebody pointed out in, uh, Andy Weir, writer of the Martian in his second book. Oh, really? Going, oh, all of these characters are Andy Weir. Uh-oh. The women, the men, it doesn't matter what their racial background is. Like everybody's Andy Weir. We are <laughs> so, the weirlings. <laughs> Come to Mars with us and start a colony. We are the weirlings. <laughs> so, you know, Saddam suffers from the same writer's issues that all writers do. Yeah, all juvenile writers. I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to disparage the guy that wrote The Martian. I will disparage Saddam Hussein, absolutely. But... <laughs> yeah, uh... we don't need to drag down everybody else. Although I have been kind of bagging on George R. R. Martin a lot. I don't. 
Well, I think I'm just mad about it, the HBO series, but... Yeah, how dare he? Um, know, so that despot. So the king and Zabiba are left alone. And he, at this point, he calls her deer, which is a big deal, because he doesn't even necessarily call like his concubines deer. So obviously he's in love with her at this point. And this is where um, we learn that... Uh, so the land that Zabiba was on, the king... I think he was riding his horse there not to clear it out, but I think he like took it over later. Yeah, they they do sort of a weird out of frame uh-huh. kick that guy off of his land, like yeah. the merchant with the palace. And it's definitely not because his palace was almost as cool as the king's palace. It was because he sold bad honey. <laughs> yeah, he was selling uh, counterfeit honey. If if this story had been if Saddam Hussein had made it to 2016 i'd be convinced that this is an allegory for trump (laughs) the way that he writes this honey charade that this man has created (laughs) this is just trump steaks or something yeah exactly he just he was really writing ahead of his time i guess i don't know yeah. But yeah, he ru- he just runs the guy off the land. He's like, he's so bad, honey. So yeah, he was telling- I drove him out, and I let everybody stay. You're welcome. Yeah, and um, they start talking about how each other look, and uh, we get this good line where the king says that he says, "I do not think uh, form in a man is as important as in a woman. Form being, Oops. you know, being sexy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's good to know our wise king believes that it's not as important for a man to be attractive as a woman. Yeah, but Zabiba kind of takes it back to him. I, I don't know exactly what he's going for with all this. If he is really this... Because she does. She makes a statement. Um, look through my notes here. Um... To judge a person correctly, one must judge his substance, qualities, and characters as a whole. A form, however, should be judged just as a bonus to the other characteristics. Yeah, right. It's a bonus. So, <laughs> in the fact that, like, Zabiba and the king are both Saddam, it's, he gets woke, like, half woke every now and again, um, in a strange way, which is just. Half, 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 it, it's good. half woke Saddam. <laughs> <laughs> such a weird you know, idea. It's like he's just and it's probably cuz he's just sitting there getting high writing this. And so yeah. he has these like weird wandering debates oh, with himself about looks. He's typing with one hand during all this. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, when there are lines like Zabiba debating with the king. There are women who are much more beautiful than I, and I have seen many of them. Forgive me for speaking openly and perhaps with indiscretion, but you probably have even had many of them too. Oh, yeah. And then the king sidesteps that one. <laughs> yeah. But I have never met among them a single one who would be as dear in heart, soul, beauty, and character yeah. as you are, Zabiba. It is. It, it just, it's, it's worth noting that the king is attracted to her personality because we'll Mm -hmm. find out later that the queen is hotter than Sabiba. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That throwdown is that's, that's coming up later. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sabiba talks about, you don't have to be attractive. And this whole thing came across to me as like an awkward, like everything you shouldn't be saying on a first date. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the if only a ruler would also become a social reformer oh yeah i yeah i have that coming up uh in a minute um they talk about all human beings having a shred of decency because they're descendants of adam which again let me remind you this was written by a torturer and murderer the butcher of baghdad and he goes on to say that the king cannot and is not a social reformer and this should we talk about the people's council? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know that it's worth the time because clearly it it did not happen <laughs> in whatever <laughs> in, in whatever he was, real cl- life. He was obviously working on it. Yeah, <laughs> when he wasn't typing, maybe that was the problem. He was so overtaken with the desire to write this book that he's like, I have this great idea. As soon as I finish this book, mm-hmm. I just have to finish the book, and then I'm going to get working on the People's Council. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'll come back to it later. I want some raisins. Ugh, you know what? Maybe it should be a trilogy. <laughs> or a thrillogy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He, he, at some point, Disney is going to pick up the Hussein Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got a four book series <laughs> just lined up. Oh They'll open a theme park. I really love this Zabiba character. Uh, you'll have a Abu great time. Uh, <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I got to talk about this, people. Go ahead. Uh huh. Oh, I was going to just say that all of this is pre-9-11, so I, it's in a bit of a gray area in terms of my knowledge of world events at the time, because we were in high school, um, and before that. What but year is this? Now I forget. It's 2000, so it was uh, okay. right before his spot really got blown yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he might have been like, you know... We we had the wars, we got them figured out, everybody's kind of taking a step back, and, you know, 9-11 happens, and the U.S. decides, this is the guy we're going after. Did, well, yeah, but that didn't, that invasion didn't happen until, like, 2004, I don't think. I gotta imagine Saddam, like, when the U.S. invaded Afghanistan, he was like, whoof! Oh, bullet, dodged, gosh. Dodged a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Now I can finish my third book. But like, yeah, I still got time. But like I said, I was I was not a very politically aware uh, high schooler. Yeah, that's for sure. You know who is it that age? So I want to. Well, kids these days have to be. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, they <laughs> they got their shit together better than we ever oh, did. For sure, we grew up in peacetime. We were sweet, sweet summer children. Hey, folks, Jay here. I uh, just wanted to pop in and say thank you so much for listening. This is a brand new project for me and Levi, and it's been a ton of fun. We recorded this episode a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're just sort of getting the hang of things. Um, I do want to say that if you want to send us an email, we have an email address, badbookspod at gmail.com. I also set up a Patreon, so you can search for Bad Books by Worse People on Patreon. We have a $3 early adopter tier there. Um, if you do want to support the podcast to help us pay for things like hosting fees, that will get you access to our members-only Discord channel, as well as in the future, we will be having... Um, in the future, we will be creating a patron-only bonus podcast content for example i want to do one where levi and i uh do a little bit of research on wikipedia about the topics that we're reading about and um educate each other a little bit so i think that'll be really fun um i'll let you get back to the podcast right now again thanks so much for listening and if you have a friend that you think would enjoy the podcast please share the good news because we're we're having a lot of fun with this and it gets better and better as this absolutely bonkers book goes on trust me it gets oh my god that you're in for a treat um so we gotta talk about the people's council uh so Zabiba mm -hmm. suggests the creation of a people's council and uh, there's pushback from the king about this and then she suggests that perhaps the king could be the head of the people's council which you know what good people's Naturally. council isn't headed by a king? And she says that <laughs> if the king were part of the people's council, then the people would just do whatever the king wanted because they would have to because he's the king. That is what Zabiba is suggesting. And the king goes on to say that social justice uh, is not the task of the king, but of revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. So as, as, as much as he wants... Levi, he wants social reform, but uh -huh. that's the job of revolutionaries, and I, as king, will do my best to kill them. Because we so he's agree. Kind of, he's kind of begging for a revolution here. It sounds like it. <laughs> he's like, please, come take me out of this palace. I can't take it. It's not clean. I just want to write. Like, put me in a, put me in a clean and orderly hut. 
and build the people's council and you know free me from this cursed life of food yeah that you hate so much comfort getting fat and then uh and then the king voices his concern about the council stripping privileges from the king At, at this point i have in my notes in all caps more political theory isn't this a romance novel? <laughs> because they are just talking politics. Like, the last thing you want to do on a first date is talk politics. Deep. In- <laughs> you don't do that. Um, and, then, and then my next note is, is this her... Because she's talking like this is the first time in the palace, but before they said that they were visiting each other a lot. So I guess they were visiting each other outside of the palace. This is her first time in there. Yeah, he was coming to her hut. And she you know, says... But the husband was getting weird about it. <laughs> so they moved hey. it to the palace, into his chambers, which I'm pretty sure is not cool by any classic uh, social moral code. Hey, babe. Zabiba, babe. Uh, you, you know I love you, right? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I want you I'll to be you happy dear. and everything. And, uh, you know, the king's the king. But I'm just wondering if um, maybe you could take it outside of the hut. Like, maybe he doesn't have to come to the hut every time. Like, he has a palace, right? Didn't he just take over that other palace? I know that I you are legally mine by right. Uh-huh. Everything but <laughs> your so mouth, I'm totally apparently. So everything's totally cool. <laughs> he just passed a new decree. Mouth stuff's fine, I guess. Uh... <laughs> I can't compete with this. <laughs> he keeps changing the rules. <laughs> by law. <laughs> Uh, and I love this line, um, coming from Zabiba. This is what a woman like Zabiba would say. Does a common woman like me need freedom? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then, uh, Saddam Hussein, the butcher of Baghdad writes, I am the king of a great country. I love when the people are free. Barf. (laughs) I love when the people are free, so long as... They're doing exactly what I tell them. Yeah. Um, and this is when he, he starts moaning again about how he's the uh, prisoner of his own palace. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this yeah. is Zabiba reaffirming his idea that he is the uh, prisoner of his own palace. Because you're right. I mean, it's Saddam talking to Saddam right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is all great. It's it's an oddly Aaron Sorkin script oh almost. because they're walking down a hallway <laughs> yeah they start about walking down the hallway and they're talking politics i imagine the king is putting on his jacket over his shoulders <laughs> um, <laughs> you but know he's getting yeah this whole conversation is happening on the way to his bedroom yeah um at, at this point the king uh tells her to calm down which you know all <laughs> women love hearing and she questions Other him about the lack of moves. uh windows which he says is for uh security i am curious how i don't know much about saddam's palace and maybe i should go look up some pictures and stuff uh from the invasion and when we did take it uh (laughs) and see like was it like oddly closed because that doesn't seem one it does not stop drone strikes uh, particularly well, so why not throw some windows in it? Drone strikes can melt steel beams. <laughs> it turns out. Um, also, even for the time, it's it's a strange, like he's going into this deep metaphor, but it's oddly souring on the, the time period that he's painting it as, because that was why you had walls on the outside. Because that was where the attacks came from. It, mm. Inside, you were wide open because it's the Middle East. It's really friggin' hot, so you need to have as much airflow as possible. This Zabiba mentions that this um, yeah. palace is like a spawning place of demons. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're... Truly, your pal- palace is a den for breeding demons, my king. That is because the demons come out of forsaken palaces, and your palaces are de- desolate. Um. It's because it's probably 110 degrees inside. Yeah, she rips into this no place. No ventilation. She rips into this place saying there's no airflow, and she says it's it's a place where the devil lurks. Yeah. This is a quote I like. Uh, <clears throat> the king. Any means are justified if they achieve the goals dictated by the interests of power and security, Zabiba. Saddam Hussein said. 
<laughs> Any means are justified when it comes to security. Yeah, and he does say, in the end, I had to accept the traditions. Uh-huh. And talking about, like, living in the palace. It's like, yeah. okay, sure. Like, but this fucking again, book make... started with a horse ride. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah, out in the countryside. His guards are apparently not on point at the gate. Um, cause Zabiba walking up took them totally by surprise. <laughs> yeah, it was a real shit show. It's some cute dumb and, cops. And then they all chewed each other out and, <laughs> oh, we did get past, um, Zabiba talking about whether or not the king was the cruel one or did he not have to surround himself by cruel people? Oh, don't worry. The people uh, around the king are much crueler than the king yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. Saddam is way more chill. Um, <laughs> so we finally make it to the king's chamber, and she explicitly says that she wants to keep talking. At which point, like, I was about to throw my my book away, because <laughs> this is a romance novel! <laughs> Allegedly. And we finally make it to the king's chamber. And they're like, yeah, maybe we should talk more politics. <laughs> I really want to hear about more about this People's Council. And you being on it, King. <laughs> yeah, right? How good of an idea it is, and how better of an idea it is if, if you're on it. Now, uh, I don't want to come across as like humble braggy or gross or whatever, so I, I, I want to say this in the most tactful way possible. In a couple of times in my life, I have been called or texted late at night by women as a booty call. Uh-huh. As a booty call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I had showed up and started talking politics, they would have kicked. <laughs> they would have kicked me right out of the house. Like, uh huh. That's not. That's not what this is about. It's not getting anybody in the mood. No, that's for sure. So I don't know. Like. At this point, it's really just Saddam Hussein talking to Saddam Hussein and putting any sort of romance on the back burner so that they could talk about politics and stuff. You know, I'll give it to him. They get to the door of his his room and then they say goodbye. (laughs) I feel like like that's that's kind of a power move on the king's part because, I mean, you're the king. It's your palace. There are apparently no windows. So... There's not going to be a scandal. The implications. The, yeah, there are no implications here. But he's like, no, I gotta go. Yeah, it's weird because she wants to ask the king about his childhood. And that's where he draws the line. And it's like, no, you can leave. Yeah, she, she touches on a sore spot, which I'll give him this. I am curious now as to what the king's backstory is. Well, is he the the boy listening to the toothless old lady at the beginning only time will tell <laughs> i don't know i mean to be fair i've been reading dune at the same time uh it's gotta be not at the same time whiplash. i was i was reading dune and then we started reading this and so i'm waiting for the like political intrigue to really oh, yeah. take off and so i'm wondering like oh you know, did he have to kill like his brother in front of his mother to become king and let the let the spice flow? I mean, they do talk Whatever about how the... like uh, emirs they call it are, is like a prince, yeah. someone who has a claim to the throne, and how many of those oh, there are because of all the con- uh, the concubines and stuff. So mm-hmm. like, basically, you have a zillion little heirs to the throne running around. Yeah. <laughs> I assume Saddam had a harem, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I'm sure. Like, as not in the I classic, like, you show it. it off way. Yeah. Ugh. I just wonder, like, is there... Is there someone that he is writing this for? <laughs> like, is there a high school crush that got away <laughs> that he is, like... <laughs> that he is thinking of when he's like, ah, oh, she was just... She was smart. We uh, could talk politics. Uh-huh. She kept her shit clean. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Her name was Aplum. Uh, I wish I wasn't king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now we have a little conversation about scheduling where uh, 
it turns out that um, she can't come back on Friday because uh, that's the day of worshipping Allah. Uh, it is time before Allah. <laughs> which is what, yeah, got me confused about that. And they go over some scheduling stuff and they just decide she's going to come back on Saturday. Yep, and really uh, riveting. <laughs> and this way is, to wrap up this chapter. Yeah, this is where we. Yeah, so, ooh, Friday. Oh, that's not gonna work. Uh, oh, do, I wonder what is gonna work. Which day? Can you do Saturday? Yeah, I can do Saturday. Praise ooh. Allah. Yes. Oh, they made it work. So this is where we learn that the king doesn't worship Allah, and this is some sort of metaphor about the spread of Islam at the same time. And I have just written here, uh, she actually just left. Um, so she leaves. <laughs> she just leaves. The king gives her a horse and a bag of gold. And, um, oh yeah, then she f- finishes with a thought about how small gifts from a common person are more meaningful than big gifts from a king. Which is too, it's almost like Would- the spirit of Christmas or something. Yeah, or it's Saddam saying, like, hey, everybody... Pay up a little bit. It's good for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would give to you guys, but it, it would more. be it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I wondered about that too because she starts with like the, the people curse kings. Kings certainly know something about generosity that the people do not. And then she won eighties on herself. <laughs> I don't know what Zabiba is doing, and I think Saddam is high and maybe <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> No, when she does the I don't know where the that's the refractory, I, refractory period. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh, maybe I'm a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is where we have our first like page break. And it's not like it moves on to another chapter, but it, I don't know what you would call this. It has like star, star, know. star, and then a new chunk of text. Yeah, this is where we should have gone back to the grandmother saying mm. something to like. Mm-hmm. Because Zabiba even leaves it hanging where she says, like, isn't the common man more noble than the king? And then the next line is, she saddled the horse and headed home. Right. So we're not getting any... He's not actually saying anything. He's no. just philosophically jerking it. Yeah. In front yeah. Of us. It's a vague, uh, like, I'm 13 and this is deep sort of... <laughs> thing so, I'm so asking questions yeah man Ugh. so now we have our page break for the first time and where are we afterwards zabiba comes back baby we're right back at the fucking palace immediately <laughs> immediately first sentence we're back at the palace it's saturday yeah that would have been a good time to just put the book down and walk away forever <laughs> i agree i agree and if if this were if this were not a, a pilot episode, I think that's where we would have ended it. But yeah, <laughs> we got a good teaser because the free preview is about to end soon. Yep, we're coming up on <laughs> And this, so Zabiba's back, but this time, there's women. Yeah, this is where we really get an antagonist. A clear, I know that at some point we're going to come across America being a problem <laughs> character, but... We're not to that point. This character is, I don't know if it's supposed to be Zadam's wife. Oh, She's God. doing the side eye thing, probably <laughs> reading this chapter. <laughs> Can you imagine? Dear God. The worst. <laughs> right. The run in with the ca- queen. Yeah. So Zabiba so comes back to the palace and this time she's meeting all the women of the court. And, uh, she meets the queen and she talks about how, uh, although the queen is beautiful, she cannot judge her character based off of looks. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zabiba can't. Yeah. No, no. And much to our. But she is taking note. <laughs> much to our surprise, the queen is basically the Disney evil stepmother trope. Yeah. She's. She's mean. <laughs> she's really mean. <laughs> She's really hot. She's really mean. And they go back and forth, like, asking each other, like, rhetorical questions and stuff. And the queen says, this, she says, uh, enough of this philosophical talk. And I just have, thank you. Yes, (laughs) I put that, this pretty much sums up my review. That's, (laughs) 
Page 36, I've noted the exact same. Also, speaking a language that we can all understand, because when Zabiba goes on, this is, I I did not struggle up to this point in reading, but when oh, I got here, dude, I was, really was battling my own eyeballs. It was such a grind, because I knew the end was near. I'm just like, oh my god, I can't do it anymore. Well, we know what Zabiba's about. Like, yeah. this is not revealing any new character. No. This is just saying, like, the queen's a harpy. Like, yeah. so the king is totally justified in being uh-huh. into Zabiba, I guess. Yeah. Um, which is, <laughs> and then, yeah, my note. Saddam's wife. They cool? That's, yeah. <laughs> it's just another fucking power fantasy by our author the butcher of baghdad um god can i i have a line here that i really love um a man may be attracted by beauty especially if he is young and therefore may not find in his chosen a good nature prudence or taste still soon after his first wedding night he will begin watching for influential and substantive substantive qualities in her if he finds none he will continue his search in other places and in other women yeah that's why so i believe in premarital <laughs> sex being good overall because he can learn <laughs> if you're you can compatible. just get a head start on this yeah <laughs> uh-huh. oh my god this is this is buried in some really bad old school like yeah. beliefs about how relationships work and how they continue to work post marriage, which is how you, we end up with harems and shit. yeah, I guess yeah, and how they justify them. Listen, he'll let, he'll hang out until you guys can bang, but then if he doesn't <laughs> like you, he's gonna start looking elsewhere. <laughs> like Tom yeah. Tom Likas wrote this. <laughs> You're still gonna be banging. Yeah. But he's also going to be looking. And you're still going to be married, and you're not going to be able to get divorced. <laughs> yeah, you have no legal rights, because yeah. you're his. Let's uh, jump back to the first chapter about Zabiba. Although she is apparently all about town, despite that. <laughs> Zabiba? <laughs> whatever, yeah. I don't yeah, know. she's not under whatever restriction the queen is here. Well, it's okay It's okay to have sex with the king, if you're a oh, yeah, yeah. Always, like, always cool to have sex. According with the king. to the king, come on, that's different. <laughs> yeah, she does. Sabiba does have the best zinger in this whole thing when she tells the queen, "Ask the king himself what he was attracted to in me, and he will answer you better than I ever could." Yeah. Boom! Mic drop in the court. Who's here? It's Zabiba dropping a raisin. <laughs> <laughs> dropping a raisin on ya. Oh my god. Come on and slam <laughs> and welcome to the jam. Yeah, I just... I mean, that's... <laughs> that line right there is like, you know what? Saddam's got some lines in him. Uh. With a good editor. <laughs> there might be a great story here. Uh, uh, speaking of the editor, um, (laughs) yeah, our buddy Robert at one point, yeah, this is a line written in the book. It says her words held several meanings of, uh, for those in the culture in that region of the Euphrates. Doesn't say what those meanings are. (laughs) Just says that it held other meanings (laughs) that you'll never know. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, buddy. <laughs> really supporting us here. Yeah. Uh, so the queen kicks everyone out of the room, even the uh, the door guard, and of course, uh, the queen reveals she's mad that Zabiba is taking the king for herself, and all the other women of the court, of course, are jealous. You would think, in my opinion, it would be a great relief. <laughs> 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 but no <Exactly. laughs> nope and Zabiba of course is justified because she's not taking the king for herself she's taking him for the people oh god yeah All right. ugh, ugh, I mean ugh, the it happens to just be them <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah you, th- you think the walls they of get... your palace are thick enjoy your spider hole yeah <laughs> Hey, you know he was working on the fifth one while he was down there. He was probably <laughs> relieved that he had all that time to work on it. It was written in charcoal on the walls of the spider hole. <laughs> yeah. The CIA actually has his notebooks. Oh, God. With all of his works. 
I'm sure they do, actually. Uh, they go back and forth about who's better. The queen is hotter, uh, and the queen suggests, I think, foreshadowing, the people have planted roots in the soul of the king. How dare they? Yeah. And yeah, this is when uh, Zabibo basically suggests that the queen knows nothing about the king, and uh, the queen says she knows everything about him, um, which is obviously untrue. And this is where <laughs> this this is where we run out of. At least this is where I ran out of uh, free yep. material. This is where the pages forty to one hundred and ninety nine are not shown in this preview. But let me tell you. I'm kind of curious. Me too. We've already I'm... read basically 20% of this book, so like... Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that there's a trigger warning. At some point, there's going to be a rape. Yeah. At least one. I want to know, is there going to be a lovemaking scene between the king and Zabiba? Well, that's what I wanted earlier. I know. I was... I could not Listen. fucking believe it that they made it all the way to his fucking bedroom and didn't <laughs> hook up. Right? Even in like a, like door closes and we don't read about it. But when I think romance novel, I, as a kid who might have gotten their nose into a romance novel or two, <laughs> like those things are guaranteed like four good graphic yeah. sex scenes in there. No one took anyone. We're a quarter in. No, no, yeah. no bosoms heaved. Uh, this uh, really is unintentionally a allegory for what not to do on a date. I'm telling you, <laughs> like you don't, you don't, say you don't talk about teaches politics. Teaches you how to not date. Like if she talks, she asks you a question about your childhood. Bring up the toothless old man and just like laugh it off. You know. <laughs> anyway, we're both here yeah. to bang, right? <laughs> My God. And to be fair, when we get to the. To the graphic scenes, we have to recall that this is all being told by Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And, and then, um, and then he is engorged red, <laughs> broke down to the top of his sweatpants. She took him in her hand. Oh my god, yeah, it's the line. I knew that Grandmother always found stories with a moral for us. Uh -huh. Some of them she would make up herself. <laughs> this is Grandma, who's been married to her cousin for 40 years. I do want to hear Grandma's made-up morals. <laughs> and that's why you can't water down your honey. Just ask your step-grandpa. <laughs> they took his head out. They killed him with his own bees, I tell you. <laughs> Stop laughing at my lack of teeth. <laughs> I, I forgot about this until this moment, but when I was reading this, I was kind of inspired um, for my own movie. And I want to, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I might, I might cut this out and put it at the end. At, okay. At, <laughs> this is your pitch? We're going to get your pitch? Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's a movie okay. about uh, a dictator who has a bunch of lookalikes, body doubles, mm -hmm. and they stage a coup and kill him and take over okay. the government. And no one knows. <laughs> uh huh. This is <laughs> no one else can I... tell who the who's a lookalike and who is the the actual leader. You, this is actually, I think, <laughs> maybe what his second book is about. Because <laughs> we're getting we're getting two thousand Saddam Hussein with this book. I wonder oh, when. God. I don't actually know when the second one is written because I kind of want to see these as like you a know slices of, in yeah, time. Yeah, like where real. is his head at Dude. before nine eleven? Where is it after? Once I get my PhD, I am going to write. I am going to have a history of the, the history of Iraq via Saddam's literature class. Oh man! Anyway. Yeah, he wrote Fortified Castle in two thousand one. Men in the City doesn't. Give a date. Two thousand one's getting close to the end there. Begone Demons in two thousand six. What? Wasn't he dead by then? Alright, I, I gotta I don't... study. <laughs> yeah. Alright, alright. I'm gonna cut this. I'm going to splice it um as a post credit uh little bit. Just some fun with your pitch. Yeah.